Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. We're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 242. Page 242 today is our lesson number 133. Let's take a look at it. We have a parabola here and we're going to shift it. Here is our parabola. We've seen it before in the last few days many times. We're going to pick it up and shift it. One unit to the right. So here's our original parabola here. Now we're going to just shift it by one unit to the right. Did I say to the right? I meant to say to the left. We're going to shift it one unit to the left. And it will look like this. It's the same exact thing as before. Let's just shift it one unit to the left. That's it. This is this horizontal distance is one. This horizontal distance is one. They are all one, even though they don't look like it. They are all one unit. All of these arrows that you see there, they are one unit. In other words, whatever value, of, whatever the value of y was here. Now the same value of y takes place at one unit earlier. Whatever value of y was at this unit, let's pick here. Whatever value of y he is here at, at a given value of x, now the same value takes place one unit. Sorry, whatever value of y that was here at this unit, now the same value takes place one unit earlier. Because it's been shifted to the right one unit. I'm going to say it one more time. So whatever values of y's that took place before for a given value of x, the exact same values of y's are going to take place now, but one unit earlier. But the relationship itself between x and y does not change. It just occurs one unit earlier. That's all. So as a result, as a result, whatever values of y that occurred before for a given values of x the same values the exact same values of y will now take place for values of x's, values of x which are one less than before. One more time, I'm going to read to you here. For example, one more time, um, let me point it to first here. Let's say for example, let's pick a point here, let's pick a point here. See here, for this, for, for this given values of x here, let's call it x1, the value of y was here. I didn't have to plot all the way up there, that's not the point. Now the same values of y, the same value of y will occur one unit earlier. It's the same, the same exact value of y, but it's taking place one unit earlier. From here to here is exactly one. That's what they're saying. This distance right here is exactly one. So one more time, as a result, as a result, 
whatever values of y that occurred before for a given values of x, for a given value of x here, the y was this much. Now the same value of y will occur, but one unit earlier. The same values of y will take place for values of x, which are one unit less than before. The point is, how do we show it in, 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 the, in the equation, in the function? That's the tricky part. Let's do it on the top. That's the tricky part. You have to understand how to, how to actually show it. To compensate for that fact, so then I'm, con I'm continuing from here. To compensate for that fact, the fact that all the values of y's are taking place now one unit earlier, to compensate for that fact, we have to we have to add one to x's. In other words, wherever we see x in the original function, let's erase all of this thing so that so that it doesn't get too crowded. We already read it twice. As a result, whatever values of y that occurred before, whatever values of y that occurred before for a given value of x, given values of x, the same values of y will occur now will now take place for values of x's which are one unit less than before. And as a result, to compensate for this fact, to compensate for that fact, to compensate for this fact here that we just stated, we have to add 1 to x. In other words, wherever we see x in the function, in the original function, we have to replace it with x plus 1. Our new function is y equals, let's give it a new name here, I don't know what we called it earlier, y equals x plus 1 or x plus 1 squared. Now, here's, here's the part that I want you to understand. The place where sometimes students get confused is that they don't understand why are we adding one to it given the fact that we are shifting it to the left, we are going in the negative direction, why are we adding it? Why shouldn't we, sub shouldn't we be subtracting one from the x? No, we have to give x, we have to give one to every x to compensate for the fact that x is one short. For example, for example, let me draw this thing again one more time because it's too crowded now. Let me draw it one more time. Before x was 0, when y was 0, x was y was 1, when x was 1, and y was 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, y was 4, and x was 2, and it looked like a similar to this word here, 1 and 2, This relationship between x and y has not changed. This relationship is still the same. The only problem is that this relationship is taking place prematurely. This relationship is taking place one unit earlier. So, whatever the values of x was here, whatever the values of y was here, the same value of y will take place over here. But over here, x is negative 1. x over here is negative 1. The, the, val, the, the value of 0, the y value of 0, listen carefully, the y, y value of 0 corresponds to the value of the function inside, this part right here. This part somehow has to be 0. This part somehow has to be 0 so that y can be 0 because 0 squared is 0. How do we make this part 0? By 
adding 1 to it. This right here, you see, right here the x is negative 1. x over here is negative 1. If you were to subtract 1 from it, that will become negative 2. We have to add 1 to it so that this part becomes 0 and 0 squared gives us the y value of 0. So when x is when x is negative 1, when x is negative 1, y is 0. So it shifts from here to here. Before, when x was 1, y was 1. Now, y is going to be 1, one unit earlier. So instead of x being 1, x will be 0 and y will be 1. Again, the same exact problem. So again, this time, somehow, somehow we have to make this quantity in the parentheses equal to 1. We have to make it equal to 1. But x here is 0. As you can see, x is 0 here. x is 0. So how do I make this quantity in the parentheses 1? By adding 1 to it. So now 0 plus 1 squared gives us the 1, which is our next point here. So this point corresponds to this point. This point corresponds to this point. Just do one more. Now somehow we want inside to be 2. 2 squared inside this part here. 2 squared. 2 squared is going to give us our 4, which is what we need. Before, y was 4 when x was 2, right here. y was 4 when x was 2. Now, y is going to be 4 when x is 1. It's going to appear 1 unit earlier. Right here. When x is 1. If x is 1 here, if x is 1, I need 2 inside in the parentheses. How do we make 2? by adding 1 to it. Hence the compensation. For every x value, for everywhere we see x in the function, we have to replace it with x plus 1 because he's one short. Why is he one short? Because he's, uh, he's showing up uh, too early in the scene. He's appearing uh, one unit earlier than he's supposed to. So because he's one short, we got to give him 1. We, have, we got to compensate him. So now we get 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and that's, that takes place here. I'm going to continue doing here. Let's do the negative side now. Let's see what happens. Before, okay, listen carefully. Before, y was 1 when x was negative 1. Now, y is going to be 1. Oh, we already did that. We, we did that here. Before, when x was, oh, this is what I meant to say here. Before, when x was negative 1, y was 1. Now it's going to take place. Give me a second, I'm losing train of my thoughts here. Let's first join this point here before, before so that I... Right, this part is fixed. Now we have to move on here. So before x was 0 and y was 0, now x is 0 and y is negative 1. Before, when x was negative 1, before, when x was negative 1, y was 1. Now, y is going to be 1 when x is negative 2, right here, when x is negative 2. So x is negative 2, but somehow I need 1 inside here. I need negative 1 inside here because negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is going to give us 1. y is 1 when x is negative 2. How do I make this quantity in the parentheses 1? Or negative 1 by, by adding 1 to it. How do we make this quantity in the parentheses negative 1 instead of negative 2? By giving it 1. So that's right there. Just to continue, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to finish it up. Now before, before, when x was negative 2, when x was negative 2, y was positive 4. Now, y is going to be positive 4 when x is negative 3. When x is negative 3. When x is negative 3. So, x is negative 3, but in the parentheses we need negative 2 because negative 2 squared, because negative 2 squared equals 4. How do we make the parentheses negative, uh, negative 2? By adding 1 to it. Hence the compensation. That's it. So everywhere you see x, you replace with x plus 1. And that shifts the graph to the left. It's counterintuitive. You might think that by adding 1 to every x, you're actually shifting it to the right. No, no, no. As you can see, that's why I'm taking so much time to go through every single point so you can see that. It is a bit counterintuitive. When you shift it to the left along x-axis, when you shift it to the left, we have to give 1 to x to compensate for it. When you shift it to the right, we have to take c units away from it, which is what they're talking about. Now we are ready to read the part that I want you to read. 
at the bottom of the page on page 242 there are four bullets on the bottom of page 242 there are four bullets and I'm going to read the, the last two bullets because we read the other two right here in the third and the fourth it says the graph of h of x plus c if you have x plus some constant that new new function is the graph of the original function shifted to the left by a few units you see right here x plus c c in our case is 1 x the graph of x plus c is the same graph as the original graph but shifted to the left by the c unit whatever the c happens to be in our case c in our case that constant is 1 voila that is our new graph. I'm going to draw it in red because it's easier to see the contrast between the red and the black as opposed to blue. It has been shifted left. The whole graph has been shifted to the left by one unit, which is what this one shows up here. This that which is what this one is for. Had it been shifted to the right, we would have subtracted one from it. That's all. That's what they're talking about in the third and the fourth. And that's all I have to say on that topic. Let's see, what do I have for tomorrow? Ah, tomorrow is interesting. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we'll deal again with this uh, piecewise function that we're talking about. This is a parabola and the piecewise function, which is the absolute value of x. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, so we're done about, we, we talked about how, yesterday we talked about what happens when you shift the curve up and down. You can watch yesterday's video and learn what happens there. In that case, because we're moving it up, up and down y-axis, we don't have to do anything to the x. There is no sort of adjustment for the x. We just simply add whatever it is that you're shifting up and down. Today we learn what happens when we shift the graph left and right. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we're going to take our graph, listen very carefully, we're going to take our graph, We're going to take our graph and we're going to make it, believe it or not, we're going to make it fatter. How do we make our graph fat? How do we make our graph skinny? If the graph looks like this, if my graph looks like this, This is the absolute value of x, that function, piecewise function, is very fat. Isn't it? He needs to go on a diet. How do I make him skinny? How do I make him skinny? That's what, that's what we're going to learn tomorrow. How to make our graphs fat and skinny. And of course, these people being these people, they're not going to speak like that, in a, like the, the way I did. They have to say the same thing in a very convoluted, very, very annoying way. Which, of course, is something that we have to understand because if you're going to take the exam, you have to understand how they speak, you have to understand their language. They're not going to ask you to make the graph fat. They're not going to ask you to make the graph skinny. They're not going to say which of the following equations is going to make the given graph fat. They're not going to say it like that. They're not going to say which of the following equations is going to make your given graph skinnier. They're going to say something else. They're going to use a different language, which is what we're going to learn tomorrow. Okay? Tomorrow and day after tomorrow. I'll see you then. Okay? Bye now.